I'm Joseph Caldwell, and this is Ryan Alford. And today we are recording a Sales Wolf podcast, and we are the Sales Wolves. You got to howl. Arr! <laughs> but uh, I'm excited to be here today and to have Ryan with me. He's got a unique story and and uh, starting a new business, Radical Company. And so we wanted to uh, get to know him a little better. This is Ryan Alford with the Radical Company Podcast. Really excited today uh, to be with Joseph Caldwell, the CEO of Consolidated Assurance, and really happy to see you here today. Hey, Joseph. Thank you, man. I appreciate you having me on your podcast and looking forward to talking to you and learn a little bit about Radical. Yeah. Where that I mean, came from. You're, you're officially, uh, you know, I've been doing the podcast and started Radical, and the, you're, you're number two under the Radical uh, name. Sweet. I've kind of folded it under, so, you know. I've always loved coming in second. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey, you were on the list number one. Actually, we've rescheduled this a few times. Yeah, we have done that. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, we've had a lot of training and stuff that we've been doing with our agents, so it's been, it's been nuts. Yeah. So, it's um, been nuts. Yeah, but I, you know, I'll talk a little bit about Radical, but I, um, on these podcasts, just love getting kind of the backstory. You know, it's centered in marketing. We want to kind of come full circle with, you know, how you use marketing in your business. And, you know, I know you're doing a ton of content and different things, um, but give um, kind of our listeners a little bit of that backstory for you professionally. You know, what the origins of the company, Consolidate Assurance, and then maybe, you know, what kind of brought you to where you are today? Man, I, I guess my career here in Greenville started, I was selling payroll for ADP. Nice. I was a payroll slinger. <laughs> and uh, and, and I, I had a manager there that actually helped me break a lot of bad habits, like laziness and slothfulness. <laughs> and he was a great manager, but the first thing he said to me, because I've always been able to talk my way into and out of everything. And we had our first Friday meeting and I gave him my week's results. And he's like, the results are fine. He, he said, but did you do what I asked you to do? And he asked me about that. I was like, I didn't need to. I got the results. Like, I didn't need to make those phone calls. I got the results. Yeah. And, uh, and he goes, huh, this is your one mulligan. He goes, what are you scared of? Are you scared of the phone? I was like, I'm not scared of anything. I was terrified of the phone. <laughs> and, and he was like, you scared of just walking in cold to places? And I was like, I am not scared. He was like, great. I was terrified of walking in cold. I was lying to him, right? <laughs> right. And we all lie to ourselves <laughs> yep. about stuff. And so he was like, well, meet me here at 730 Monday morning, and we're going to go work together all next week. And I was like, oh, my God, I hate this human. <laughs> and so he made me make phone calls and walk in cold. And he would do one, I would do one, he would do one, I would do one. And by the end of that week, man, I was like, I I can't believe I haven't been doing this forever. Like I started crushing it. And I was so thankful to that guy, but went from there to commercial banking. I worked at Regions Bank and then went from Regions Bank to, I got recruited from a business owner in Spartanburg to run a dealership and, and a finance company. And that was my first opportunity to be a business owner because he recruited me to, um, it was all his money, but I would earn part of the business every year for five years if it was profitable. Mm. And so it was a unique position. Yeah. That's when I really looked at it and I started treating it like it was mine. Every dollar, I started seeing it like that's my dollar. And uh, and so that was probably the the place where I, where I really cut my teeth in real entrepreneurship. But I wasn't by myself. I had this mentor, this guy, because it was his money. Yeah. So he watched what yeah. was happening. So you're insulated and, a bit. Yeah, 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 big time. It was a really good good place to be. And um, I actually was going to sell out of that several years later and start that whole process on my own. And you know Nathan, and we were yeah. going to do that together. And um, about the time that we we got out of that and were setting up our own, uh, that's when the market just disappeared. Mm. Um, couldn't get a hold of money, couldn't borrow anything. You couldn't. Yeah. I mean, it was it was it was funny. Mm. And so I was left in a position of going, okay, what do I do? And Nathan and I talked. We talked about insurance. We had never sold insurance. 
So uh, we thought you could make money doing that. We had heard you could make money doing that, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> and, For the last hundred years, right? Uh, or so. And uh, it, but we didn't have any experience in it, so we called our buddy Jeff, and Jeff had been been selling insurance for a while, and I was like. We all met at Starbucks, and, and Nathan and I were pitching him on on starting an agency together. He was the only one of us making any money at the time. Yeah. And he was like, oh, man, that sounds good. I don't want to do it. Uh. And I was like, oh, no. Oh. So I poured it on, right? I told him, I was like, look, you make a little bit now, but if you're in business with us, whatever we touch turns to gold. I literally had no track record of that. <laughs> hey, you're but a salesman. I told him, <laughs> I Sell like, it, baby. This is going to be huge. This insurance thing we're yeah. doing, right? And and I was like, and this is your last chance. Tomorrow, this deal doesn't stand. We're starting by ourselves. Today's the only day you can be a third partner. And he goes, okay. <laughs> and so, so we started Consolidated Assurance, and eight years later, we're doing sixty thousand policies a year. Um, Jesus, we uh, we have a good, we have a really cool business now. It's a fun business. We have a lot of successful people we've been able to mentor. You've met Tyler before. Yeah. You've been on a podcast with Tyler, and, yep, and uh, and seen just the difference in his life going from I don't know what he made thirty or forty grand the year that we met him, and three years later I think he's made six hundred and fifty a year yeah. now. So. It's a, different, it. it's a different situation, so yeah. it's really cool to have been able to help people like that. For but sure. That's the background. Yeah, I love it. You hit on a few things there. I mean, you talked about in that first position with being scared, and I think I know that people struggle as they get into sales. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's people that struggle with finding that confidence. Yeah. And also, the second thing there was passion. Yep. You know, it was like that light switched, mm -hmm. and I think... It is such a moment for people in their careers or in their life when passion meets opportunity, mm -hmm. it's magic. And yep. so, you know, talk a little bit more about, you know, what was it that kind of triggered that passion? Yep. You know, yep. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. You know, like you're scared, which is, I scared. you know, I didn't realize what I was scared of. Remember, I just said, I said I was scared of the phone. Yeah. I was scared of the cold call. Yeah. I wasn't scared of that. Right. People aren't, and, and people may go, you're we scared of failure. I wasn't really scared of failure. I was scared of failing in front of other people. I was ah. so worried about what other people would think. Mm. What will that business owner think? What will that secretary think when I walk through the door and I say something, or if I can't get it out right, or what, how will people look at me? How will yeah. I be viewed? And that, I think, is what terrifies most people and keeps them hindered for, for life. And and literally, people need to realize that nobody gives a shit. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, if we could all just care more about what happens internally of our own selves and how we treat other people as opposed to what they're going to think about us if I do or don't say something the right way. Um, um, you're so right. We, so. we all get, I get paralyzed at times thinking way too long about, you know, how is this person going to think about that? Or what? And the reality is we're a little... It almost shows how inflated we are because they really don't care. They, they don't you think know, about they're, you. They don't they're think not about nearly as much. <laughs> they're thinking um, about themselves and worried about yeah. what other people think about them. Like, exactly. And so when you really get freed up when you can get past that, mm -hmm. which it sounds like you did. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's been a process, man. It didn't happen yeah. all at once. And even then when I, I became more confident, my confidence was coming because I would get success from doing it because yep. I was getting bolder and bolder, but I was still scared of what other people thought about me. Yep. And I just didn't realize, I hadn't been able to pinpoint that until you look back over years and you see the progression. Yep. And you go, yeah, I really don't care what they think about yep. me. And that allows me actually more freedom to be nicer to people. Yep. Isn't it crazy? It is crazy. It all works together. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds crazy when you're like, I don't give a damn what you think. But I, with that also comes reciprocity where it's like if they need something, oh, man, I want to help that person. Yeah. Like it frees you up to be yeah. a nicer human. I Empathetic. Think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It, those learnings come. So how old, how is the, has Consolidated Assurance? Like eight years. They, eight years. Okay. Because I'm thinking, yeah. recession, you know, you talked about the recession. I think, I think 08. It's kind of like that. End of this year by next, I think we started March 15th of 2010. Yeah, so, how big, so how many employees, or I know the contractor um, agents. If you look at everybody that we have total with, with agents and employees, we're around 100. Yeah, nationwide? Yeah. Yeah, every. Around 100. Yeah. In that company. Right. Um, 
Greenville originally? Or no, Black yeah. Mountain, North Carolina. Okay. A little small country town. Yeah. Up there in Billy Graham and God's Country. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually met him one time. I worked at the Billy Graham Training Center when I was in high school, and um, I got bitten by a spider yeah. at work, or maybe it was before I even went, but I got so sick that somebody was coming to pick me up. I walked right past him, ignored him. Missed my chance to meet Billy Graham. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's even more of well, I guess he passed. This year, was it late last year he passed? Late you know? last year. Yeah, or the beginning of this year. Beginning was, of this year. Yeah. And a really powerful man around here. Yeah, and Really yeah. worldwide. I didn't realize. I mean, I knew growing I grew up in the South, so I knew that he was, I didn't realize the worldwide reach. Yeah. You know, he's, had, he's had breakfast in the White House with every <laughs> president for the last 50 years. Yeah. Um, Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. Yeah, um, I mean that's you got some pull when you're when you're dining with the president. <laughs> yeah. So talk. Um, I think it would be interesting uh, for the audience. You know, doing the entrepreneurial thing. So eight years in, a lot of success. Pitfalls or not not regrets or what to do over. But any tips for the entrepreneurs out there that. Man, if I'd had the guidebook, you know, because the company's booming, you're doing great, but anything, you know, by well, way of people, those things. I skip the part between we started Consolidate Assurance and now we're doing 60,000 applications a year of life insurance. There's a lot of stuff in between those two things. That's like looking on somebody's tomb and you see the dash. It ain't just a dash, there's a whole bunch of stuff that happened <laughs> yeah. in that ledger. Dash. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so one of the things I would say is it's miserable and it's a lot of work. I mean, people want to be an entrepreneur because they think they hear that, that word even sounds sexy. Yeah. It doesn't sound sexy to me. It sounds painful to me yeah. because if you're going to start anything, if you're going to build anything great, first off, you're never going to be able to do it all by yourself. And so you have to find your, your, your tribe or your group yeah. of people, your community, and you have to build that. And it comes hard. It's hard. It comes one person at a time, and you have the Judases in there that will betray you and the things that don't go right. Yeah. Um, and then it's just most people don't realize the work, the yeah. work involved. They, I can't. Uh, this is probably the first year, um, but about the last year and a half, that that I've been able to take a vacation. I've been able to do kind of what I want to. Yeah. And and I've had the the staff in place that the place doesn't crumble when I leave. Um, you know, it's, it was funny. We were doing a training um, this past week and weekend, and there were gift bags that were being put together, and I saw them lined up in the hallway back here in the office, right? Yeah. And people would put them all together, and they were awesome. I didn't put one thing in that gift bag. I didn't have to do that. And it was such a relief to me because I remembered not five years ago those gift bags, all those things were in my house in Spartanburg, and me and my children were packing, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so it's a different. It's so different. Like people yeah. don't see that part. They they walk in and they see this off, awesome office building. They see the business booming, but they don't see the part where the first thirty people that were hired was because I was up doing ads on Craigslist. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, it was. Uh, it's different. So, and it's funny you, t you touch on that. You know, I know. Uh, we both follow like the Gary V's of the world and all that. Yeah, but he yeah. preaches patience and work, mm -hmm. and it's, and you you know you kind of hit on those themes a little bit more you know more so the work side of it. But it is not easy being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It all right. kind of falls on your shoulder. It looks it's become glamorous, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or the perception of being glamorous. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it's one foot in front of the other day by day mm -hmm. and it's building blocks and I think people like to see uh, the side of it that looks fun and all that and oh, yeah. the, you know and that kind of segues into a little bit of the content side of things you know I think you know all the social media channels and are great and I, you know we're both uh, you know heavy into that stuff and it's good but it can kind of paint a picture that doesn't tell the story. Unrealistic picture. It, yeah. it does, and you know you have to be careful and, and guided uh, a bit in your approach in how it's not just going to come. No, and it's work. Uh, and it's I think, work. <laughs> and it never um, happens as fast as you want it to. Like you're talking about, Gary Vee talks about patience. I'm telling you, it never happens as fast as you want it to. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Um, any. Uh, 
any other things out there, um, tips or, you know, for someone that might be listening that's thinking about, you know, going out on their own and, you know, taking that step, mm -hmm. anything else kind of in your personal entrepreneur playbook that's, uh, um, you know. I know this is going to sound kind of kooky. Yeah. But if I don't know what to do, I really get quiet and listen to my gut feeling. It sounds kooky, but... Um, Man, I, if I feel pressure to act now, like, like this overt pressure pushing me to make a decision, I stop. Yeah. I just stop and go, hmm, if it's a good deal today, be a good deal tomorrow. Think a little bit longer before you act. That's um, sage advice. Uh, I've had to learn that one myself because I, I came up in the ad agency business on the account service side. Yep. And account service are people that serve, pleasers. Yeah. And we're fast, we're quick. Oh, you know? yeah. And that's been something that's been, if I've learned anything, is it can wait a second to figure out what the best step is. Sure. And I have, uh, that's been a hard one for me to come by, but I think a really sage advice for people that in our world with social media and with the news cycle, everything is boom, 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 boom. You know, but a little more thoughtfulness mm -hmm. in our consideration for things that are important. Sure. You know, because sometimes, you know, deciding, uh, you know, what post I'm going to do on it, yeah, that's one thing. But I think that a lot of decisions get thrown into this rapid, rush. like we feel like we need to rush through them. Right. And I think that's a big one for people to learn. And that's one because I do work so hard and I think I unconsciously put a lot of pressure on staff just by my presence. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's one thing that like talking with certain ones of them, especially ones in key roles, that they'll be like, well, you haven't told me what to do. And like, like this has got to be done. I'm like, why, why exactly does it need to be done now? Yeah. What's so important about that right this second? Yeah. And you kind of slow people down just a little bit. And I know that's counterintuitive to what most people think. No, about I think it's right. Hustle and all yeah. this stuff. But, but you need, if you're going to make good decisions, if it, if, because a lot of people are ruled by the tyranny of the urgent. Yes. Right? They, it's yeah. urgent. And, and you got to, and, and this just has to get done because this is the first email in my inbox. Well, there might be one that's about 10 down mm -hmm. that's way more important that you should have slowed down, scanned through, and gone, now oh, that is something that needs to be done today. Yeah. Not this thing that's not due for six, eight, 10 months. Like, just be, you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like I'm just I think that, that is one example. of the biggest things. Um, you know, I've started the new company, Radical Company, mm -hmm. consulting, lifestyle, a lot of things. And being an entrepreneur, prioritization is so mm -hmm. important it's because key. it is, it can be a challenge when you're an entrepreneur, you know, whether you're one people or 50 people, knowing what to prioritize. And we have I to think, fight against your very nature. Yeah. Okay, so our brains are hardwired to protect us. So in corporate America, that means stay safe. In, in business ownership, that means stay safe. So they're, they're hardwired to keep us in safety. Yeah. So the hard decisions are out here not safe. So our brain automatically pushes us towards the easy decisions, the get this done. You know, instead of answering that email, you need to get a cup of coffee because that's safe. You need to, you need to go to the bathroom for the seventh time because that's safe. You know you're not going to die in the bathroom. Your brain is hardwired to do this. So you have to fight against so your true. very nature to go, let's risk... Because literally, I'm not worried about there being a copperhead in here. My brain would try to save me from that, right? Right. I would shut down logical thought, and I would stand yeah. up on this thing with you, hugging you, probably, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Um, but, but, but our brains are hardwired to keep us safe. And so those safe things to do is what people have to fight against. You go, you go okay, I'm not, let's not do the safe. Let's do the important. Yeah. Even though it's risky, even though it's challenging, even though my brain is going to tell me to try to steer clear from that. People aren't procrastinators. Yeah. I don't even think that word should exist, to be honest with you people are just scared yeah. of the unsafe because that's how we're hardwired we are hardwired like if I'm going out hunting for my family a couple thousand years ago and there's a saber-toothed tiger I need to run right that's not safe so that's just how we're, we're wired it's all biology
when I started realizing that, I started realizing I wasn't such an idiot <laughs> and that I could accomplish things like... Well, I appreciate you rocking the, the GVL, GVL Hustle, Greenville, Greenville Hustle, Hustle. Hustle. I know. So, yeah, I mean, I, I actually wanted to kind of go there a little bit with you, like your thoughts on Greenville, you know, like it's booming. And, it's incredible, yeah. I mean, is uh, has that been, has that impacted business at all? Has not it been a, good for business? Not a lick for us because we're across the country. Yeah. So uh, the, only thing that, the only thing that impacted for us was it raised real estate prices and I paid more for this building than I should have. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, and yeah. taxes are always up. Yeah, of <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it doesn't impact anything for us. Our um, our business is uh, it's pretty insulated. Yeah, when it comes to that. Yeah. You know? um, what are your thoughts on the growth overall? I mean, I you, love Greenville, man. I think yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, everything is growing around here. It's a it's a good place to live. Yeah, it's good for family. I mean, I uh-huh. I brought wife and kids from Manhattan. I, mean, I grew up in Greenville. Probably I was born in Greenville, but have lived elsewhere and yeah. brought wife and family back mm-hmm. uh, from New York to Greenville. It's a great place to yeah, raise a family. I came from Connecticut, so we were south of Hartford. That's where we were living. I was born in Black Mountain, North Carolina, but yeah. had lived in Connecticut and same type of same type of environment. Lots of people, small space. Yeah, um, there's more space here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. What do you um, What do you like to do when you're not uh, running the company? Man, I like hiking. Hiking's fun. I like to get anything in nature. Yeah, anything in the water, beach, mountains, ice, snow. Um, like last year, I took a trip to Iceland. Mm. Just drove around the entire yeah. island. And uh, just explored. It was fun. That's great. Yeah. What's, um, I know you've been kind of wrap it up here with um, discussion around content and you know, mm-hmm. bring it full circle with marketing. You know, I know, you know, the, the company and, you know, you mentioned Tyler is, you know, partner and works mm-hmm. for you at the company and all that. But and he's heavily into social and things. Big time. I know you've gotten into it pretty big, too. I follow a lot of your stuff. It's great. Um, you know, what's your perspective on all this stuff? Personal branding and how, as it relates to business. And, yeah. You know. um, I have bought into, and Tyler's been talking about it for the last couple of years, but I've bought into the fact that we're in a position, a really cool position. We don't make our money off social media, so we don't need to sell anything through social media. We do, we, we have our business, but we do have insight and perspective into stuff. So we, I almost feel like we owe it to the world. Yeah. And I've bought into that with Tyler and will we monetize it someday? Probably. Yeah. I mean, I'm not here <laughs> for all loves and hugs, but, <laughs> right. but, but we're just not going to do it for a while. Probably, yeah. probably another four years. Yeah. Um, including this year where we'll just put great stuff out there for people yeah. and, and just encourage people. I think that, I think there's a lot of people out there and you know, the social media really wasn't that big when I was giving you my story, right? Yeah. But I always had men, like I can point to several different men that reached down and was like, hey, you, man. I remember one time in particular when I was at the bank before I made that leap from the bank. I was eating lunch with, with Roger Ezell in Spartanburg and makes a ton of money. Yeah. And he asked me, he asked me how much money I made. Nobody asked their banker that. <laughs> Nobody yeah, that is unusual. It's unusual, yeah. right? And most bankers, commercial bankers, would have been like, I mean, what does that have to do with anything? All right. But I told him. I was like, this is what I make. And, and very humbly, he was like, you know, that's not enough. And it was literally the first time where I was like, I'm doing better than my friends. All right. But I'm not doing anywhere near what this guy's doing. Yeah. And if he says there's not enough, he's looking at me and he's telling me there's more in me. Yeah. And I went, instead of being cocky or condescending, I went, what do you suggest? Hmm. And it was a moment of humility and I learned then, and, and he, that's when it launched everything, really launched the last 10 years, was hmm. me learning from him in that yeah. situation. But yeah. kind of cool. What's, um, but giving well, back, that's where, that's where I was going with that. Yeah, is that he did that for me, yeah. why wouldn't I put stuff out there? Because there's gonna be somebody that's, because being an entrepreneur is tough. You come on days that you wanna quit, and maybe multiple times a day, 
and maybe for long periods of time you wish you could quit. Yeah. And uh, and maybe they need something where they go, you know what, if that dumb idiot can do it that jumps in ice water named Joe Caldwell, then maybe I can, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I love it. So tell, tell our audience uh, where they can find you, all your stuff. Uh, Joe, the Joseph Caldwell. I think everything's there. CEO of Change. Yeah, on um, Instagram. Yeah, yeah Instagram. Yeah. All of Instagram, Facebook. CEO of Change, you can find it. Yeah. Babel, I think is the new one. What is it called? <laughs> I can't even remember it. Doppel, that's Doppel. it. I can't uh-huh. even remember the names yeah, of these, man. Well, it's hard. There's so many channels now. I know, that's right? That's the one. It's like figuring mm-hmm. out where to stay, where to go. I record stuff, and then people just post it to all the different ones. I can't even keep track of them hardly anymore. Distribute it. Yeah, but, and that's great. Well, I'm sure everyone will check it out. I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thank and, you for having me, man. Yeah. I uh, wish you luck in this. I want to see you blow it up Yeah. and do think, big things. Yeah, I think we will. So, um Look forward to getting back with you here soon. Yeah, man. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Joseph. Yeah, thanks, man.